Hi there. Now if you've been watching the previous videos in this series on probability tree diagrams, you'll know that we've been talking about the probabilities of independent events. That's where the probability of one event is unaffected by the probability of the previous event. Now what I want to do now is introduce you to dependent events. That's where the probability of one event is affected by the probability of a previous event. And I'm going to encourage you to use a different type of notation. And this is going to be especially useful when we come to something called conditional probability. And in order to illustrate this, we've got this example up here where we've got a bag that contains five red counters and two blue counters. And a counter is taken out and it's color noted. But this time, unlike previous examples where we replace the counter, this time it's not replaced. And then a second counter is taken and it's color noted. And we've got to draw a probability tree diagram and find the probability of taking two different colors. So I'm assuming then you're familiar with drawing probability tree diagrams for something like this. If not, do go back and check out those earlier tutorials. I would have encouraged you to put down the trials. And in this case, we've got two trials. The first trial is the first color. The second trial is the second color that we take from this bag. And so the tree diagram would look something like this. And we've seen in the past that for taking out the first color, we've got two outcomes. You can either take a red or a blue. And if you take out a red counter, the probability of taking out a red is going to be five out of a total of seven counters. And you'd put it in something like this. And then similarly, if you took a blue, that probability would be two out of seven. Now this is where it's going to change. If we take this outcome, we've previously taken a red counter, but because we haven't replaced it, then the probability of taking another red counter is going to be reduced. It changes because we didn't put the counter back in the bag. There's now four red counters out of a total of six. So it's very tempting here to write the probability of a red equals four six. Now I'm going to stop you here in writing this because we've used PR, probability of a red, as being five sevenths. And I've got a contradiction here. And in order not to have a contradiction and to show that this probability here is dependent on what happened before, we change this. We write the probability of a red given, and that's done by drawing a vertical straight line, given that we've previously taken a red from the bag. So that's the notation I would encourage you to write. And so for this outcome here, this would be now the probability of drawing a blue out the bag, given that I've previously taken a red. And that probability would now be two, because there's two blue counters in the bag, out of a total of six. And when it comes to this branch here, this will be the probability of taking out a red again, given though that I have taken out a blue first. And that probability would be a total of five reds out of six counters. And this last outcome here, well, that's the probability of taking a blue again, given that I previously took a blue. And so there'd only be one blue counter in the bag out of a total of six counters. So it's this notation that I would encourage you to do. Because if you just left it as PR, PB, PR, PB, notice how those probabilities change and they're not exactly the same as the ones that we've got here. And this would lead later to confusion when we're dealing with conditional probability. But the rules remain exactly the same though for working out probabilities from the tree diagrams. 
as you'll see in this example where we've got to find the probability of taking two different colors. So if I write the intro for that, the probability of taking two different colors, then this is equal to the probability of taking a red first and then a blue, or the probability of taking a blue first and then a red. We have mutually exclusive events. Two events here, they're mutually exclusive, so we add those probabilities together. And so that means that we've got the probability of a red times the probability of getting a blue, given that we took a red, plus the probability of drawing a blue, times the probability of getting a red, given that we took a blue. And if you wrote that down, it would look something like that. And we just need to put in the probabilities. And if you put in those probabilities from the tree diagram here, 5 sevenths times 2 6, 2 sevenths times 5 6, and add those two results together. Work that out, you've got 10 40 seconds plus another 10 40 seconds, giving you 20 40 seconds, and that can reduce down to 10 20 first if you divide top and bottom by 2. So I hope that's given you some idea on dependent events and the notation that I'd encourage you to use. This given notation, given by this vertical line here, the probability of one event given that a previous event occurred. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. Do have a look at the next example that you should find below this one if you're looking on my website. Remember, the website is totally free. It just relies on your support. So hopefully I'll see you there.